industry putting enough focus and investment towards their storage solutions right now? Clearly not. One year later, that's changed. We are in production, we are ramping, the demand's there. AI has changed the data center, pushing far more data through the system, much faster and for much longer periods of time. Take storage. What used to sit off to the side now feeds GPUs continuously. Systems becoming far more compact because AI needs data instantly. But packing more power into a tighter space creates one thing. Chips that are running hotter, um, creating a lot more heat, using a lot more energy and a lot more water. Raising the question, what's the best way to cool all this? Liquid cooling. Liquid cooling. Liquid cooling. The liquid cooling. We're running an Xbox right out of the fluid here. Heat is a constant problem inside data centers. GPUs draw enormous amounts of power to function at full speed and nearly all of that energy ends up as heat. Traditional air-cooled facilities use massive fans, HVAC systems, and chiller towers that evaporate enormous amounts of water to dial down the temperature. It's effective enough for high-performance computing and early AI, but as AI workloads grow hotter and denser, Everything is getting more and more power hungry to the point that we're seeing that, especially with air cooling, it's starting to reach its limit. Enter liquid cooling. Systems that pump liquid, usually a special dielectric fluid, into parts of the system or in some cases the entire system to pull heat away. The liquid behaves like a mineral oil, safe to touch and non-conductive. We, we take the flame on the fluid. It's not, it's not actually going to light up fluid at all. So that's the safety factor of it. Today, Valvoline provides a liquid used in DLC, hybrid, and immersion cooling. The three architectures of liquid cooling, each with their own history and unique use. DLC was a first, emerging inside data centers around 2015. Instead of cooling the whole server, it targets only the hottest components, pushing liquid through cold plates mounted directly on top of the chips. The liquid absorbs heat at the source and carries it out through a closed loop. It remains the easiest and most widely adopted approach because it fits standard racks with minimal changes. And that makes it a prime space for innovation, with vendors now looking to cool more than just the chips, including new solutions that cool the SSDs themselves. The cold plate touches uh, the one side of our SSD and we have thermal mechanisms inside of our SSD which allow cooling on both sides thus bringing the overall uh, thermal profile down. But it also has a clear limitation. You still need fans and cold plates together to produce enough cooling to cool the IT down. Isotope specializes in precision liquid cooling, which is essentially a hybrid between DLC and a full tank immersion system, which we'll explore next. We wanted to be able to keep the customer experience so that they're able to service the systems the same way that they usually do, in a way that's very energy efficient and doesn't require any fans. It sits in the same design family as DLC because both approaches push liquid cooling inside a standard server chassis but it differs in how the liquid touches the hardware and how it moves. We apply dielectric fluid into the chassis and there's about one or two inches in the bottom and that's actually circulated by small pumps through the system and uh, to the CPUs, RAM, GPUs, storage, all the components get actively cooled by pump fluid. Liquid outperforms air because it pulls heat directly off the chip at the point of contact, instead of relying on airflow to push heat away, the way the traditional systems do. The next idea pushes this concept even further. With Midas, all the fluid is in direct contact with all the board components. Instead of circulating fluid through parts of the system, immersion dunks all components into a tank of fluid. At Supercompute, we saw examples of immersion solutions that use Midas tanks, Hypertech servers, Valvoline fluid, and embedded storage solutions by Solidime. So you can see on top here is where you have all of your NICs, peripherals, as well as all the components that are meant to be hot swappable, right? Like, like in this case, Solidime's uh, E1.L drives. Uh, the other thing as well, if you look at our compute nodes, each single one of them are are individual in respect to each other, so you're able to pull them out without, uh, without any issue. 
And obviously with the bigger servers, we have a crane that we can pull up, let it drip, and then you're able to service. It's very easy to do so. By submerging all data center components, the fluid cools everywhere continuously, preventing localized spikes, and in this case, keeping SSD temperatures flat and predictable for long stretches. These drives have been in the tank, I think, since Sunday night, and they've never deviated from the five degrees Celsius temperature. The fluid just starts to run faster and it, everything stays the same temperature. That stability brings another benefit. There is an increase in longevity of the components. Electronics fail from stress, thermal stress and physical stress. Immersion removes both. The fluid keeps temperature steady, preventing the heat spikes and hot spots that fatigue components over time. And with no air moving through the system, there's no dust to create new heat traps. One of the servers we have in our lab, we have been running for about uh, 18 months, 100% capacity, uh, non-stop. And after 18 months, compare the beginning fluid. Along the way, we have a lot of data, right? We charge that 18 months, no change. That level of efficiency isn't just a technical win, it's becoming a necessity. In regions like Europe, where space is tight and power costs soar, hybrid and immersion cooling methods are enabling operators to squeeze maximum performance out of every watt and every rack they have. They just don't have the square, square mileage to be able to build new facilities up, so they're having to figure out how to utilize their existing facilities in a denser environment. The other big issue is power. The EU, especially during the winter time, has power costs just spike very, very much higher than, uh, than what we're used to in the state. So Midas will save them 40% of the power utilization that an air-cooled environment would take to spin uh, to, to cool the exact same workload from that perspective. And that combination of power savings and a tiny physical footprint is opening up new market opportunities in the U.S. too both at the edge. From a lab to a workshop to a school. And on-prem. We're hearing that customers are wanting to start bringing their compute back on-prem because of compute and security reasons. There's no denying the cost that comes with solutions like these. After all, you're looking at new hardware that likely comes with a learning curve. But that investment can pay itself back quickly. So if you can save 80% of the cooling energy, you can use that saving towards higher power compute, which you can monetize. You can't really monetize the, the cooling aspect, right? But the big question remains, how do you know which architecture to deploy? We turn to Josh Grossman with Supermicro. So most people that are going to do a greenfield, and by that I mean a new deployment, are going to be using something that's liquid cool because they see the uh, kind of the increase in the power consumption and the TDP and, and all the things that require uh, liquid cooling. But there's a lot of folks who have legacy data centers that are air cooled and so they might be looking for something like the sidecar solution which is liquid to air or they might want to stay with an air cooled solution. You basically want to make it the least cost possible to get to the client that needs the AI service. Because today your workload truly drives your architecture. And that shift points to something even bigger. Think back to the demos we filmed. Immersion, DLC, even air-cooled racks, different cooling, different power, but everyone featured a Solidime SSD. Because modern AI architectures aren't built around a single component. They're built around the flow of data end to end. Signing off for 6.5 Media, I'm Diana Blass.